Welcome to the 2011 RoboSub competition. I'm Zoz Brooks, I'm a robotics engineer and I play one on TV. I go to where the robotics action is around the world, and this week it's here in San Diego at RoboSub 14. I'll be your guide to all the underwater robot action this week as 27 student teams and their autonomous robot submarines vie for technical superiority and big cash prizes. RoboSub 14 is sponsored by AUVSI Foundation and ONR and it's a truly international competition with teams coming from India, Iceland, Japan and Canada as well as the United States. We've also got both colleges and high schools represented as well as a lot of first time competitors this year so there's going to be plenty of excitement out there in the water. Let's go see what's going on. To introduce RoboSub, I'm here with Daryl Davidson, the Executive Director of AUVSI Foundation. Daryl, tell us about RoboSub this year. Well, this is the 14th year for RoboSub, and it's the 10th year we've been here in San Diego at this just perfect venue that we've got here in Space War. And we've got a record number of teams. We've got more international teams this year from a larger number of countries. It's setting itself up to be a great event this year. I'm here with the Technical Director of RoboSub, Dr. David Novick. He's the main architect of the course and uh, basically in charge of RoboSub. Run us through the course. What will the students expect? Certainly. So this year, since it's the 14th year, it's a kind of a love theme, Robo Love. They always have to pass through a gate. That's just to show they can go straight and go underwater. From there, they can pick up flowers, which is touch buoys. They can go over different path elements, which are the lover's lane. They can drop markers, which uh, correspond to love letters. They can shoot torpedoes through a heart-shaped cutout. They can home in on a pinger, retrieve a base, and drop it off at their sweetheart's house. Some people see these vehicles in the water and they sort of instinctively think, well, that doesn't look that hard. Well, when you've not got a person controlling the behaviors of the submarine, it gets exponentially harder. And that's really the huge leap between a remote control competition and this competition, which is fully autonomous. The course is the main event, but the student's final score depends on a lot more than just the robot's performance under the water. Before the teams even get here, they've got to write a paper, they've got to do a website, and then once they're here, they'll go in front of a panel of experts and they'll do static judging and they'll make presentations and really be quizzed on what they've done, their approach, and, and to defend that in front of people that really know the ins and outs of robotic submarines. These 18 teams were judged by a dedicated team of expert judges from the sponsoring agencies, particularly the Office of Naval Research. The interest really is to get them motivated and get them to want to work in new technologies. We really want to have those students move on and work for naval applications. So one of the things we're doing is we have uh, 10 internships available that some of the students here can start working next year on unmanned systems for the Navy. We really want to, to grow more engineers, more computer scientists, uh, and we want to reach out in the community to help make that possible. We, we view this as an investment in our future uh, in terms of scientists and engineers and also we're very heavy technology based and so we need folks to help develop the next generation of technology and maintain the high tech tools that we use today. You can teach all these things in the classroom, you can do books and labs and those kind of things, but until you get out here and your compass doesn't work and you're trying to figure out why and, and you have to rewire things, just innovate and, and when you hit the real world things are different and you're invested in it as well. It's actually really interesting how we get to take all of these things which we've been learning in engineering classes, we've been doing all this work and it's all very theoretical and then we come here and we can see exactly how it behaves. It's just amazing every single time to see it in the water. I don't think there's any better venue that uh, we have today than what you see here where these kids are challenged with a real life problem, something that uh, takes them into the underwater realm forces them to deal with vehicles, vehicle control, uh, acoustics, uh, optics. It really is uh, applicable to some of the problems we're seeing today in the real world. We do see a lot of really bright young people create uh, underwater robots that uh, are, are really cutting edge and it's neat to see them work as teams from different universities or different schools. But what you really see is the collaboration and cooperation and just the teamwork and general learning that goes on all around. We've got folks here, a couple computer programmers who said this would be fun, I'm going to build an unmanned underwater vehicle. Learn some hard lessons now, they're talking to people, high school teams, working with the college teams and it's, it, it's watching that, that, those knowledge accidents happen, it's fantastic. Now the subs are out of the water, the soldering irons are turned off and the students are enjoying a well-deserved party. But you know it won't be long before their thoughts turn back to robots and the ideas start percolating for next year. Check it out and get involved at robosub.org. See you next year.